back to Slow Living. If you are new here, my name is Esther and I like to sew stuff to support a slow lifestyle. A lot of that includes mending, caring for garments and also sewing things from scratch. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can use a bit of um, scrap fabric, little bits of material that you might have lying around and turn that into a really easy alternative to paper towel. I also forgot to mention that I decided to make a cute little pouch for it as well. So as you can see, it turned out really great for how you can store these little uh, cloths. I still don't know what to call them. These little, these little not paper towels. And I show you how to fold them and pack them in in such a way that they do this. All right, hopefully this works. Ta-da! It's a very, very easy process. If you are new to sewing, this is a great project to take on. It's not very complex. Um, you basically sew these little bits of scraps together, flip them inside out so that they're nice and neat, and then you can use them as, you could actually use it as a handkerchief or a napkin, or just as little scrap sort of towels instead of paper towel, and that will reduce the amount of disposables that you use in your kitchen and around the house. I have given these a test run. So this is what they look like, um, they, all of these, I made quite a few. Um, because they don't take up very much fabric, you can make a whole bunch of them, which, make, which makes them very, very convenient as paper towel. I forget what I was gonna say before that. Uh... The only thing that I would say is that you sort of need to use natural fibers for this. So if you have scraps that are synthetics, they won't really work as well. And the reason is synthetics will not absorb moisture as naturally as things like cotton or linen will. So I highly recommend that you use things like cotton, linen, flax, um, any sort of natural fabric that will absorb really well because then it will obviously serve as a much better rag. As a cleaning rag, you need it to be able to absorb water. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So this is how they look like straight out of the wash. I actually took them on a little camping trip with me and they were very useful. You just whip them out of a drawer, um, just like how you would a tissue or a uh, paper towel. Um, use it to wipe up the spill or give, you know, the countertop a bit of a wipe and then just throw it into the wash bag when you're done. Let's get started. So these are the scraps that I used. I actually did a project where I upcycled an old linen bed sheet and so that's why you can see all these little bits of stitching that were already existing but because I'm using these as you know sort of reusable wipes it really doesn't matter and I would encourage you to do the same to upcycle something old give it some new life find some little scraps that you have lying around um, and you can always unpick the seams like I'm doing here so get rid of any of the extra turned over seams so that you have some extra fabric to work with and then basically just get a little pile of cloth that you can start to use as your scraps. Of course you can also just buy some new fabric and like I said at the beginning make sure that you're using a natural fiber because that will absorb the best. If you're using scraps like me make sure you give them all a really nice press um, that way all your seams are nice and flat and we can get started on creating something new. Once you have your fabric you can choose how big or how small you would like your scraps to be. Since I'm using odds and ends I'm just going to make the best of what I can do. I really want to optimize all this fabric that I have so instead of cutting them down to like a rigid must be 30 by 30 or 20 by 20 I sort of just went with the flow um, and I trimmed little bits off where I thought I could and I saved as much as I could. Um, I even pieced together maybe two bits to form a square. Um, they don't have to be squares, they can be rectangles, they can be any really odd shape actually, it doesn't really matter. For reference, my pieces were mostly square shaped and they were between 15 centimeters to 20 centimeters. Now we want to pair up our pieces. So for me, I put two squares together to create one little cloth. Here, I'm actually sewing together some pieces to make them squares. Like I said before, I had some odd shaped pieces, so I'm creating those square shapes. But once you have the overall shape, sew around, let's say you've got a square, sew around three edges and leave one side open so that you can flip it inside out like I'm doing here. If you've used a different shape, like a rectangle or a circle, do the same thing. Just make sure that you leave a gap of about 10 centimeters open so that you can get your hand in there and flip it inside out. When you've finished flipping them all the right way out, you can get your iron out, make sure it's topped up with some water so that the steam function is working well and give all your pieces a really nice press. Once you've done that, you'll be able to close the side that's left open uh, by folding it on the inside like this and then sort of giving it a nice flat press so that all those raw edges stay on the inside of your cloth. 
as long as you press that down, it should stay nice and flat and it will make it a lot easier for when you just sew down that edge with your sewing machine. As you're sewing, just make sure that you've enclosed that seam on the inside again so that it's nice and neat and then just zoom straight down that edge. I just did an edge uh, I just did an edge stitch which is about one millimeter off the edge of the fabric um, and then you can actually do a top stitch and go all the way all the way wow I can't really talk today all the way around the outside of your cloth and that will just give them a really nice neat finish and that's really all there is to make those little reusable towels they're very simple so now we will move on to the little pouch so I was looking for a little bit of scrap fabric that I could make a little holder um, ideally just bigger than your scraps so that you can nestle them in um, not too tight and not too loose because if they're loose they'll move around too much if it's too tight it'll be a pain to get them in um, every time you need to refill your little packet and so like ideally I found ideally coincidentally 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 I found this like perfect sized <laughs> scrap I mean, it might annoy me a little bit that this stripe and this stripe are not located in the same place, but that's a very minor detail. And I'm just so thrilled that this little piece of scrap fabric that I found in a nice sturdy upholstery fabric is just going to be the perfect size for these um, cloths. So let's get started on this. I will show you quickly how to do it. Also very, very easy. So size wise, you want something in width, uh, as you can see here, that is just going to be wider than your cloths. So you need at least a centimeter on each side so that you can sew down that as seam allowance. And then in terms of how long you need it to be, um, it sort of needs to be able to fold over your, your scraps uh, like so. And because we're going to create a tiny little opening at the front so that we can access our pieces of cloth, we're going to make sure that we fold over that raw edge. Um, and so you're going to need a little bit of seam allowance on that side as well. So as a general rule, you need one centimeter seam allowance on each edge of, the, on each edge of this rectangular shaped piece of cloth that you're going to make your pouch out of. And before we sew anything, I would recommend overlocking all around the outside of your cloth. That just means that you're not going to have little bits of fraying pieces everywhere and it's going to look much nicer when it's finished off like this. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is just sew down the opening edges. So these are the two edges that are going to form that little front opening flap um, that I will show you here. Once those two edges are sewn down, you can see they'll create a very neat little opening for your pouch. Now to finish off the pouch, we just fold uh, the right sides together like so. Um, it kind of depends on how you would like to finish this because you can do it um, butting the edges together nice and flush or you can overlap them a tiny bit like I'm going to do here. I think that overlapping them means that there's less risk of stuff sort of falling out from the front. So I'll show you here that once I sew this edge they're just overlapping by probably less than a centimetre there and I'm just going to sew straight down that edge. Once it's sewn up, we just turn it out the right way. And because the fabric that I used was a little bit thick, I used a um, unpicker, you can use anything really, to sort of push out the corners of your pouch so that they're sitting a little bit nicer. Now I'll show you um, a way to fold these cloths, which is basically how tissue paper is folded in a box so that when you pull out the tissue from the top, the next one comes through. So it's very, very easy. I shall show you. Basically what you do is you lay one piece down, um, lay the other halfway over it, fold it over, and then before you fold over the other piece, lay down a piece on top of that piece. So basically fold, lay a new piece, fold, lay a new piece. And repeat until they're all done. Now that's all that's left, oh gosh. Now all that is left to do is pop them in your pouch. go 
that was a really easy project. I hope that you are inspired now to maybe make a few for yourself. They do make a big difference as all of the disposable things like tissues, paper towel, reusable, not reusable wipes, disposable wipes, that kind of stuff is easily replaced by reusables. And so if you can make your own, that makes it even better and even more satisfying. Let me know if you had a go at this project. I would love to see how it turns out. You can find me on Instagram at Slow Living. And of course here, leave a comment if you have any questions, if you had any problems throughout the process, I would be happy to help you out. And also if you have any suggestions for what I could make next, um, I like getting inspiration from you guys. So leave a comment if you have any suggestions for what would be helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I really enjoy making these videos um, and so letting me know would be quite satisfying for me and it gives me warm fuzzies. So <laughs> do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it um, and I will see you in another video soon.